to begin our meditation shall we all sing the hymn the lord is my shepherd <laughs> Psalm 89 I read first ten verses I will sing of the Lord's great love forever with my mouth I will make your faithfulness known through all generations I will declare that your love stands firm forever that you have established your faithfulness in heaven itself you said I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and make your throne firm through all generations. The heavens praise your wonders, Lord, your faithfulness too, in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies above can compare with the Lord? who is like the Lord among the heavenly beings. In the council of the holy ones, God is greatly feared. He is more awesome than all who surround him. Who is like you, Lord, God Almighty? You, Lord, are mighty, and your faithfulness surrounds you. You rule over the surging sea when its waves mount up. You still down. You crush Rahab like one of the slain. With your strong arm, you scattered your enemies. The heavens are yours, and yours also the earth. You found out the world, and all that is in it. As this title suggests, this song is written by Ethan the Israelite. We do not know exactly who is this uh, author. In this psalm, we read the mighty glory of God. The author is highly acknowledging God's glory. He is telling how God declares his love. He says, I will make your faithfulness known through all generations. I will sing of the Lord's great love forever. So this is the purpose of this psalm. The purpose is to tell people about God's faithfulness. He says, 
God had made covenant with the chosen one and he has selected David and God has promised that there will be somebody always in David's generation to rule this city or this country. God also made known his faithfulness to David. He also told when we come down to verse 20, which we were not reading because it has uh, more than 50 verses, I have stopped with 11. Now, if you come to verse 20 that we read, I have found David my servant with my sacred oil. I have anointed him. Here, this author is trying to say, God himself anointed or selected David and he was sustaining him. He was strengthening him. He was taking care of him, protecting him. Everything was so good. Especially in verse 22, he says, the enemy will not get the better of him. The wicked will not oppress him. That we know. David was always victorious. Many times he went through difficulties. The, the enemies were chasing him. He was scared of his life. All that thing happened. But even then, God was there to protect him. This is what this author is trying to tell the younger generation. And he, he says, God has promised his faithful love. And God is the one set his hands over the sea. That means God is the God of everything. There is none beside him. I, in the beginning itself, I said, the purpose is to tell the glory of God to his people. And also, he wants to tell that God wants to protect David and he made covenant with him. In verse 28, we read, I will maintain my love to him forever and my covenant with him will never fail. This is the main emphasis. God has made covenant with David and nothing will happen to him. Though, he says like this, in the following verses, we have very, very different uh, theme. Here he says, If his sons forsake my law and do not follow my statutes, now here it comes, if Though God said, I will not forsake you, I will not leave you, I will bless you, I will protect you, all that thing, now here comes. If, if your children, your younger generation, your siblings do not follow, and if they violate my commandments, then I will violate my covenant. This is the situation as on today. The author is bringing all the past and comparing with the present. You know the present situation. For the last almost uh, 10 days, we are meditating this. The temple is no more. City is destroyed. Now people are looking back and they started thinking, why these kind of things are happening in our life? Though God is so faithful, though he was loving us so much, now suddenly what happened? Now they remember, though God made all these promises, though God was very faithful to his generation, now they know this generation did not follow God's commandments. They know very well that God is so angry. This is the reality. In verse 14, you have broken through all his walls and reduced his strong holes. Verse 42, you have exalted the right hand of his force. You have made all his enemies rejoice. See what a pitiful thing now. Now his enemies are rejoicing. 
God has exalted the right hands of his enemies. Now, Israelites, Jewish community is in a very, very shaken position. Even at the end, without any conclusion, this author concludes his psalm just by saying, Praise be to the Lord forever. Nothing beyond that. There is no hope left for them. They were wondering what would happen when this will come to an end. This is our situation today. We are suddenly put into a troubled situation. In one night, everything started changing. The whole world went under lockdown. Almost six months we have completed. Till today, we do not see any light. No assurance is coming. We do not know how long we will be sitting like this without any hope. This author is exactly as we feel he also felt. Finally, he says, praise be to the Lord forever. Because God knows everything. Whether we are doing the righteous thing or sinful thing, we are in God's hands. If we realize our mistake, that's what I very often say. The Bible is not concerned about the people of other faith. The people are, uh, the God is not very concerned about others at all. But always Bible tells, if my people repent, if my people pray, if my people come to me, I will listen and change the situation. Can we come back to him? Have we not rebelled against God so many times? Though so many messages are coming to us, Though God is speaking to us directly, why don't we remember the past? Remember the faithfulness of God. Let us surrender ourselves and come back. I am very sure, whatever the situation it may be, as Israel came back with mighty power and established themselves as a nation, we also can come back and we also can tell this world we are God's children, provided we repent. Let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this wonderful evening. Lord, it's all because of your grace. Though we are punished, we are not destroyed. Though you are angry with us, we are not consumed by your anger. Still, you love us. Still, your faithfulness is there for us. Lord, we humbly surrender ourselves to you, your, your hand. Lord, forgive all our shortcomings. Whatever the undesired thing is there in our life, we ask you to forget that. Accept us as we are. Bless us. Remove this deadly virus and the situation from our city from our country and from this world so that as a world we can recognize your glorious mighty power and we can surrender our life to you bless each and every one of us lord have mercy and compassion upon each and every one of us let your faithfulness be upon us help us to lead a righteous and holy life Help us to listen to your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you all. Good